Hello, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous video, I showed you how to use Mini Tools Shadow Maker to create your first backup. Now, it's a good idea to have a backup. So, in the event that your hard drive crashes or your Windows computer crashes, this will allow you to restore your data. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to backup specific folders and files. It's similar to what we did when we backed up the disks and partitions, so I'll go ahead and briefly show you how to do the files and folders. To do this, you'll click Backup. You're going to see this familiar window pop up. You have the source and the destination. Over here, you can see I've already selected two folders to back up. Now for you, what you will do is click on the source, and you'll see these two options. Now in the previous video, I showed you how to do disk and partitions. So in this video, we're going to click on folders and files. Here, you'll see it's selected on computer. This shows all the local drives that's connected, such as your uh, card readers, if you have an external hard drive connected to do your backups. Then you also have your C drive. Now C drive is your primary drive. Now, if you just want to back up your documents and stuff, you have libraries. Now, this one here only covers like public folders and stuff that any user can use on the computer. It's not something that you'll commonly use. Next, we have the uh, user account folder. Now, yours will have a different name. And what you'll see here is all the folders, your documents, your downloads, your favorites, uh, your contacts, uh, all this information here is what's listed under your user account. Now, any folder that you want, you just put a check mark beside it. Uh, if you want to go inside that folder and do something else within that folder, just simply double click it and that will open the folder. Up here at the top, it's going to show you your current location. Now, you can also do files. Uh, if you want to back up files, if you want to back up folders, just put a check mark besides each item that you want to back up. Once you have your selections made, go down here and click OK. Now you're to come back to this screen. Now we need to do your destination. Now, because I have an external drive connected, this will automatically pop up. Now, when you do these backups, you do not want to store the backups on the same drive as a source. The reason for that is if something went wrong with the hard drive, not only are you going to use the original data, but you will, may also use your backup. So if you're going to do a backup, make sure that you do it on an external drive, whether it's a flash drive or a external hard drive. Now, if you want to change the destination, you click on it and you'll see these options. Uh, this is your local C, which you do not want to store it on. Here I have a passport. This is my external drive. It's a two terabyte drive. Or if you want to, if you have like a home server or if you have like what's called a network attached storage drive that's on the network, then you can use shared. Now, as you can see here, this one is already selected. Now, if yours is not listed on here, all you need to do is click Add New. You'll need to type in the IP address and the path of the folder that you're wanting to save it to. Now, the only thing I did not like is this doesn't have the option to browse or for it to look for network drives. Now that would be an interesting feature, um, so it would make it easier to locate a, a network drive on your network. But this one here wants you to enter the IP address of that network or the name of the device. You also have to enter your username and password if there is one and then click OK. And then you'll see it added here. When you open it, you'll also see all the folders containing on that, on that NAS drive. You just select the, the location that you want to store it and then click OK. Now, once you have selected your destination, you'll see your source, the amount that's going to be uh, backed up, and the destination of how much space is currently free, 
and the location on that drive where it's going to be located. Now to do this you can choose schedule. Scheduling allows you to set a set time as to when the backups are done. For instance here you have daily which allows you to start at a specific time or you can have it do it every so often. Uh, if you want to do weekly uh, you can do the start time and set the day that you want to do it weekly. Monthly you choose the time that you want to do it and the date that you want to do it the monthly up, uh, backup. Now for pro and a pro ultimate versions you have the on event uh, which means that anytime that you log on or log off the computer you can have the program go ahead and do the backup. Once you select your scheduling uh, you can choose OK. Next we have the scheme. The scheme if you want to turn it on will give you three options. You have the full, incremental, and differential. Now I will go into details about these three functions. The first one you want to select if you want to do uh, a scheme is choose the full one. Uh, this way you do a complete backup. And I will explain the other two uh, later on in other videos. Next we have options. Now again, it looks just like it was before when we did the previous video. Uh, you have your image creation mode, your file size, uh, what kind of compression you need. Uh, if you want to make any comments about the specific backup, which helps you to identify which backup you need in case you ever have to restore your files. Uh, email, if you want to be se uh, sent an email when the process is done. Exclusions, which will be anything from the page file and the hibernation file, which you don't have to back up. Uh, shutdown allows you to turn off the computer once the process is done. Uh, if you want to encrypt it and set a password on the backup, uh, you can enable the password protection, enter a password, and set the type of encryption that you would like. Now keep in mind, if you do enable the password protection, you must be able to enter the password correctly in order to access that backup. There's no data recovery, there's no password recovery or reset. If you forget the password, you've lost the backup. Finally, you have the verify, and what this will do is it will verify the integrity of the backup that was created. This is to ensure that the backup was successful, so any time that you have to restore it, you know for sure that the backup is, is reliable. Now, if you do to verify the backup, it will take extra time as the system verifies it, the integrity of the, of the backup. Once you have your options selected, click OK. Now that we have our selections done, we have the source. These are the files and folders that you want to back up. Destination, where you want to store your backup, your scheduling, this type of scheme that you want to use, the options, and now we're ready to back up. Now you can either back up now or you can back up later. And what we're going to do is I'm going to click back up now. Now you will receive this prompt and it's going to ask you do you want to do the backup operation now? Choose yes. Now you're going to see a new tab open up. Now the other two are the ones I've done previously. This one here will show you the file to image. This will show you the folders and files that's going to be backed up and the location where the backup will be stored. Here you see where it says preparing. This will show you the, uh, the amount of time that it's going to take and how far the progress has been taken. Over here you have the stop button where you can stop the backup. Now depending on how much data there is, um, it can vary anywhere between an hour to several hours to do a backup. Now once your backup is complete, you'll see your files and folders image, uh, the files and folders that were included, the destination where they can be stored, where they are stored, the last time that this uh, backup was completed, 
On the right hand side, you had the backup now. You can also do a full backup or an incremental backup or a differential backup. Now, I better explain these functions with dealing with backups. Uh, look in the video description below or look in the card in the upper right and I will show you uh, the video, Understanding Data Backups, to better explain how these work. Next, you have the Browse, where you can browse the uh, files that's in the image. You can restore any of the files that's in the image. Uh, you can mount it, just as though it's a hard drive. Edit Scheme, uh, that is the automated version uh, that I showed earlier, to where you can have it automatically perform your full incremental or differential process backup. You have verify, so if you need to verify a data backup, this will allow you to verify the, of the integrity. Uh, if you no longer need a backup, you can simply delete it. If you want to edit the scheduling on the frequency of the backup, automated backup, and if you want to locate where the image is found. Well, this concludes this video. Uh, I've showed you how to uh, create or backup for your files and specific folders. Uh, stay tuned. I do have some more videos coming to YouTube for the uh, other features that the mini tool Shadow Maker Pro and Pro Ultimate will provide. If you want to go ahead and try it out, uh, I do have the link in the video description below. So go ahead and click on it if you want to download it and try it out. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. Thank you for watching.